So thank you again for joining our webinar on using the Federal Procurement Data System, FPDS. We'd also like to thank the SBA and the Northern California SBDC for partnering, us, partnering with us for this event. Um, before we hand things over to Nancy, I'd like to tell you a bit about our program and the free services we offer to small business owners like you. My name is James Forrest, and I'm the program coordinator for the Northern California Procurement Technical Assistance Center, which is a mouthful. <clears throat> so uh, we just call it NorCal PTAC for short. Let's see. Uh, someone's saying they can't hear anything. I'm not sure of this. Um, so we call it NorCal PTAC for short. Our very own procurement specialist, Nancy Pigeon, will be facilitating today's workshop. NorCal PTAC is a nonprofit program set up to help small businesses achieve success in the government marketplace. We're funded primarily by the Defense Logistics Agency with, with extra grant funding uh, from no, uh, other state and local funds. All of this is good news for you because it allows our services to be provided at no cost to the public. We're hosted by Humboldt State University Sponsored Programs Foundation. It's located up in Arcata, California. And last year, NorCal PTAC actually helped our clients win more than $268 million in government contracts. Every PTAC uh, provides three core services, all of which are provided at no cost to you. The first is one-on-one -on -one counseling. Procurement specialists like Nancy here at any PTAC can help you individually with things like SAM registrations, getting a DUNS number, any of the government contract, uh, government certifications, crafting capability statements, GSA schedules, getting your company cybersecurity compliant, and any other gov government contracting topic. We can help you understand where your business fits in in the government marketplace and how to market yourself. We also have a paid subscription for a program that aggregates all federal, state, local, and school district purchases so we can provide custom reports to our clients at no cost to help you determine who is buying, what you're selling, and how to help you target your marketing. Second thing we offer is regular in-person and virtual workshops like this one on government contracting topics. These webinars and workshops are always free, and unlike our other services, they're open to anyone regardless of location or client status. So check out our website at norcalptac.org calendar to find more upcoming events. <clears throat> and third, we can set up our clients with a free bid matching service with daily access to federal, state, local, and even prime contractor opportunities. With this tool, you'll be notified when a bid request is posted that matches your desired criteria so you can stay on top of the opportunities available to you. If you have a small business or pre-venture enterprise located in one of the 15 counties listed here on this slide and on this map in green, then you're eligible to apply for our services. As I mentioned, our main office is up in Arcata. That's up towards the top of the state on the coast. Uh, but our team is located all over the U.S., including Los Angeles, Nevada, Washington State, New Mexico, and even Virginia. We brought together the best expert specialists from across the country to help you succeed. All counseling can be provided remotely by phone, email, or video conference, so you don't need to leave your office to help uh, to get the help you need. To apply for NorCal PTAC services, visit norcalptac.org and click on the NorCal uh, on the Apply Now button uh, on the page banner. You can create a profile, fill out steps one through seven, and then hit save. Then your application will go to me, and you'll be contacted by email, typically within two business days, and assigned to a procurement specialist if you're accepted. As a note, if you've ever worked at the Small Business Development Center or SBDC in the nord northern region before, uh, you'll likely need to email us at info at norcalptac.org to uh, prevent database duplicates. From the registration list, it looks like some of you are joining us from somewhere outside of our service area, so just do be aware that we are only one of 94 PTACs nationwide, including several others in California. All PTACs provide similar services within different geographic regions, so if you're not located in one of our 15 counties here, we do encourage you to look up your local PTAC and reach out to them. We've got links here on the slide, but you can also simply search find a PTAC in your web browser, and it should be the first option. We also partner with SBDCs who provide more general business assistance, like help getting access to loans. Feel free to contact us at the phone number or email address on the banner below if you need help registering to be a NorCal PTAC client or help finding the nearest PTAC to you. <clears throat> So to prevent noise interference, uh, you are all started off mute, muted today during today's webinar. But if you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them into the chat window feature 
as some of you have already discovered, and we'll answer your question during the Q&A at the end. Please be as clear as possible and explain your question in as much detail as, as you can so we don't have any ambiguities. Also, during this Q&A time, feel free to unmute yourself once we reach uh, the Q&A, but not before then. Then you can ask your question aloud to all of us. With that, I'm going to turn it over to NorCal PTAC Procurement Specialist Nancy Pigeon for the main presentation. Thank you, Nancy. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, as James said, I'm Nancy Pigeon, one of the Procurement Specialists, specialists at NorCal PTAC. Um, welcome back if you attended the market research webinar yesterday. Um, today is going to be a little more fun because we're going to actually go out and do some live searches. Um, in FPDS. Um, a little more about, about me, if you didn't attend yesterday, I'm a former contracting officer for the Department of Interior, um, Department of Veteran Affairs, and the U.S. Air Force, so I have a, um, a little bit of knowledge on a lot of topics. Um, and just a few words about the information provided in this presentation. The information is accurate to the best of my knowledge. However, some information may have changed since compiling this presentation, or it may change over time. So on today's agenda, agenda, we are going to explore Federal Procurement Data System, or FPDS. We will start with an overview of what FPDS is, and then go over using the Easy Search tool. FPDS is transferring its data reports to beta.sam. So we will review some of the reports that can be generated to include static and standard. I'll talk about ad hoc, but we won't be generating a report using that search capability today. After we go over some of the basic information about FPDS and data reports, we'll, we will transfer to the web and I'll demonstrate easy search and data reports. So FPDS is uh, an official U.S. government site managed by the General Service Administration, or GSA. GSA is responsible for a number of official government data sites, including SAM.gov, data.sam, and the Acquisition Gateway, just to name a few. And over time, many sites will be integrated into beta.sam. FPDS is a single source for U.S. government-wide procurement data. It is the central repository for information because it collects data directly from contract award. An award has to be reported in FPDS, and most contract writing systems have FPDS integrated. An award will not be complete if any data populated in the FPDS module returns an error. All data collected in FPDS is used to inform Congress on all government spend. Any number of reports can be generated to pull the data Congress is interested in seeing. The system contains detailed contract information for actions over $3,000, and the Rebecca Records begin with FY2004. Easy Search uses Google type search to find contract information. You can start with a keyword and then search within those results using the advanced search. As mentioned before, all the data in FPDS is based on award contracts, which are considered in the final status. If you're looking for a DOD contract that was awarded less than 90 days ago, it will not be included in the search. And this is a security measure to not reveal purchases to non-government entities that could reveal the operations tempo. When your search is returned, there will be a filter boxes on the left-hand side that will allow you to define your, your search and, and also drill down by department, agency, vendor, and vendor state. FPDS provides information about the award, but it does not include a copy of the contract itself. You can decipher award details from the information retrieved, but if you require a copy of the contract, you'll need to request it uh, either through the contracting officer or through a FOIA request. <clears throat> the report section of FPDS is still functioning, but we'll cease in May 2020. And so for the purpose of this training, we will use the new report section that has migrated to beta.sam. The reports can provide analysis of federal spending in many areas but mostly used for geographical analysis, market analysis, and analysis, analysis of socioeconomic areas. The data is also reliable to assess federal acquisition policy, such as those enacted by Congress, and can also help improve management at an agency. All reports are available to the public. This is for transparency and the federal procurement system. 
reports provide detailed information not only on the award contracts, but also on any modification associated with the contract. Modifications can be to change terms of the contract, add or subtract funds, and also to exercise an option year or other clause of the contract. The three types of reports are static. There are national interest actions, federal procurement reports, and top 100 contract reports, as well as small business goaling. Standard reports, there are currently 34 standard reports for contract data. Standard reports contain information about contract activity formatted to meet the needs of the government and public users. Um, and the reports are listed alphabetically. The data in standard report is presented in summary form. A person accessing standard reports can filter and sort the data to locate information of particular interest. And then the ad hoc reports feature feature offers the ability to select individual fields from the database to run a query. Ad hoc reports is an advanced feature recommended for users who are familiar with the data field and knowledge on using the sophisticated reporting tool. At this time, the full functional ad hoc reports are available only for contract data domain. Um, so that's one of the reasons we're not going to go into ad hoc. It's, um, it's kind of a time intensive one. There is training for it um, if you'd like to learn more about it. Uh, but with the time we have today, we, we won't have time to go into the ad hoc. And now we are going to go <clears throat> uh, to the live demo. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Federal Procurement Data System. Um, it's also known as FPDS NG, but Federal Procurement Data System Next Generation. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is they do have a training tab. So if you'd like to, um, after this training, take a little more time and do some additional training, you can click on that. Um, unfortunately, they're not doing any virtual training right now. Um, you could come back and look at that if you prefer to have um, a 90-minute virtual training. Um, I don't know when they're going to. Um, have more training. Um, but if you look at, um, you can do the FPDS navigation. Um, these are all videos. And you can also do um, topic two, which is easy search, uh, which is this video here. It just goes through um, and tells you kind of what I'm going to tell you today, but um, maybe a little more in depth that you can um, use from the actual system users. So for the first search, we're going to um, going to come into the easy search and like I said it has a Google type feature um, and we're just going to play off of that um, uh, the scenario we had yesterday with the janitorial um, and so since we're in California I'm going to start by searching California and we'll click on that <clears throat> so now this has brought up about mm, seven million records is that right Two yeah, 7 million records. Um, and this is for California, anything that has California in it. And as we can see, it goes all the way back to 2007, 1989, and this is everything that was awarded. Um, so what we can do is go up to Advanced Search, and we want to search within these results, and we want to add our NAICS code. So if we hit here, this is all the categories that you can search on. And we're going to click on NAICS. And our NAICS was for janitorial 561720. And then we're going to hit search. So we brought our number down to 25,000. <clears throat> um, but as we can see here, we're still um, seeing much older contracts. We kind of just want to know uh, maybe what's been awarded this fiscal year. So we can go to advanced search again. We want to search within results again. And we want to add. And this time we're going to go to effective date. So we want everything that's been effective in, the, in this fiscal year. So our dates would be 10 2019 That was the start of the FY20 fiscal year. And then we're just going to go to the end of March, 03. 31, 2020. 
And then when we search on that, it brings us down to 248. So within that time period, 248 actions have been done against that NAICS code. So we see here, so we now have it drilled down a little bit more. We have uh, 19, 2019 dates here. We have a 2020 here. Um, so this gets us a little more into our um, active information for our market research of um, what's had, what has been awarded in California and that NAICS code um, over the past fiscal year. Now if you look on the left-hand side, um, it gives us the department name and then of those 248, it tells us that GSA has awarded 86 of those. Uh, so it breaks it down. So if you're interested in a particular <clears throat> a particular department, um, you can click on that and it will bring up all the ones that they've awarded. And then agency name, so department name, and then agency name. Um, so General Service Administration, then there, um, that's the department name, Department of General Services Administration, and then the agency name is within GSA, the Public Building Service has awarded 86. And then we get down here and we can see the top vendor who's received um, 30 contract actions um, is Melgar Facility Maintenance, LLC. So if we want to drill down a little bit more, um, I would like to look at Veterans Affairs. They've had 22 because um, in some of our market research yesterday, we saw that um, Veterans Affairs uh, had a, piqued our interest because of our market research that we did yesterday. So if we click on Veterans Affairs, um, we come in and we can see their 22 actions that they had. Okay, and you can see it's all um, it's all changed over here. So now we have the all the vendors, how the vendors um, were awarded. And the one I was uh, I was searching through to find one to show you. Um, I was going to show you this Blackbird Interest Industries because it has to do with uh, the COVID virus. Um, so, okay, now we're down to our one matching contract. So this is our um, contract award number. Here's our vendor name. Um, this is when it was signed, so it's pretty recent. Um, here's our NAICS code. Um, the vendor is out of Fresno. Um, it has a global vendor name that's so probably doing um, doing business as uh, DBA. Um, it was a purchase order written by Veterans Affairs Department. Um, here's the, the amount, $303,000. And this tells our contracting office, um, and this was contracting office um, NCO 21. That's actually where I used to work. Um, <clears throat> we have our DUNS number, zip code, and uh, again the DUNS number. So if we want to um, look at the contract or the award information, we will go here to view. And so this is the form um, that I had mentioned previously. This is the one the contractor officer fills out um, when they're getting ready to award. So I'm very familiar with this form. Um, and all the information has to match. It has lots of checks and balances um, before it'll let you award. So sometimes it uh, can be the bane of the existence of a contracting officer, but um, it does give you a lot of information, um, a lot of codes. Here's the contract number. Also, here's um, who prepared it and their um, email address. So we talked about. Um, knowing points of contact context yesterday, so um, here's a point of contact we could contact. This is a brand new contract. It doesn't have any modifications yet. We can see here it was signed on the 23rd. It became effective on the 23rd, and it is only going to run through June 22nd. So it's a short contract. It's not a multi-year contract or an option year contract. Um, so we can tell that this is for a one-time uh, cleaning or for cleaning for just the three months for the janitorial. Um, here's all of our uh, dollar amounts. If it had a base and option year, if it was a base plus uh, four option years or five-year contract, the total for all five years would be right here. <clears throat> 
And again, it gives us um, all of our contract ID information, the funding agency for Veterans Affairs, um, and who wrote the contract. Here's our contractor information. It gives us the DUNS number, the CAGE code, um, also the address in case you know we want to get a hold of them. Maybe we want to do some subcontracting with them or um, get in on this contract somehow if they're if they're looking to subcontract. Um, this is a corporate not tax uh, or not tax exempt. Um, so that means they're a for profit agency. Um, here's our socioeconomic data, and this all comes from SAM. Uh, minority, Hispanic, service disabled, veteran owned. Um, and it's the SBA certified hub zone uh, and the self certified disadvantaged business. Here's more of the contract data. It was a firm fixed price. Um, here's the one I was, um, this is the COVID 19. So um, they're using emergency actions, uh, COVID 19 2020. Um, and they're letting Cong Congress know that this contract was written because of COVID-19. That way they can um, total up all the money that they used for this special uh, natural, uh, national interest action. Um, let's see. And right here it says emergency acquisition, president issued emergency declaration. Uh, you can see here number of actions one. And this has to do with um, Congressional Acts. This is where it's going to be performed in San Francisco, so it'll probably be at the San Francisco VA where they'll be cleaning. Again, we get into more of the <clears throat> NAICS codes. I'm just pointing out the things that really uh, matter to you. Here's um, what they put in the description. Again, this will come up on the report for Congress um, that it was for COVID-19. Um, you can see because of the emergency action, um, they didn't compete it. They only went to one source because they wanted to get it ordered right away. They used um, the urgency um, other than full and open competition. Um, and the number of offers received was one. So that gives you an idea that they went um, directly to this company um, to get this awarded so that they could get the cleaning done. So they've probably performed for the San Francisco VA before. Um, they're a known company and um, they provided good service before, or they may actually be a contractor working for them now, and um, they wanted to get it awarded so they could get the cleaning done. So that's how you read um, this form. It can give you a lot of information. Um, and that's how you read that form. Sorry about that. I wanted to show you, uh, if you see anything on here that has P, 0010, um, that's a modification. So uh, they have a contract and they've written a modification and we can look at that. So they exercise the options. So um, they started a new uh, option here and this is exercising it. So uh, so the current auctioneer um, is for $107,000. And the, the base and all auctioneers, so the whole five year, if they wrote it for five years, which I can't tell from their ultimate completion date, so um, it's $1,591,000. It's the total of the contract over however many years. So that's how you tell the difference between um, A new contract with zero modifications and with modifications. So that's how you um, search in here. Um, and it, I forgot to talk about the tabs up here. Um, this is for actual contracts. Um, ICD are for multiple award contracts. You'll see right here, multiple award, um, indefinite delivery type contracts, delivery order type contracts. Recovery is for any recovery act. Oh, sorry, there's nothing showing up here, but um, if they use the recovery act, um, the information will show up in here. So that's another way um, Congress can see um, if they 
set aside money for um, any type of recovery act or you know national disaster or anything like that um, they'll be able to see it here um, but the one we're mostly interested in when we do market research is the contracts um, and you can go in and play around with this um, and also take the training um, to see what else you can do but I just basically want to do um, give you an idea of um, how I search for um, doing market research if I have a client um, we could come in here and look and look at contracts and then if they want to get a copy of a contract you now sometimes um, if a contract comes up um, and they have an incumbent um, con uh, some of our clients want to get the previous contract or know how much um, was on the previous contract so it kind of helps with our pricing um, so you can definitely come in here and do that if you happen to know the company name it makes it even easier to search because um, you could just put the company name in and if you have the contract number that's even better um, for searching so but sometimes we don't have all that information um, and we have to do a little little searching for it so that is I just want to make sure I touched on everything I wanted to yes I did okay um, and it'll always show you your search criteria over here. And um, if you already know you're going to do NAIC and effective date, you can include those when you do the advanced search. You don't have to do them separately. I just showed you that um, so you would see how many results came back for each one. Um, you can also um, do a different sort order. Um, and it'll also tell you your previous searches. So you can see I did this many different ways so I could prepare it for uh, the demonstration today. So with that, I'm going to go over to um, the reports now. I'm sorry, reports. And I do have to log in and it takes you out very quickly um, if you're not active in here. So if you just give me one moment. And you do have to have a login to get into the reports. Um, if you don't have an account, you can um, go into login.gov and uh, create an account here. Then I will submit this and it's going to send me the code. Oh, it says I'm already logged in. Okay. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so just a little bit about data, uh, sam.beta.gov. Um, once they move everything on here, I believe they are going to change the name. Um, but um, here's what I'm saying. The FPDS reports have migrated here. Um, if you go to about contract data reports, um, it has reference guides for all of the reports. You won't be able to get into administrative reports. That's only for um, government employees. And as I said, the ad hoc reports, it takes a little bit of time um, figuring out everything to put to get the, the ad hoc report that you want. Um, but perhaps if you use the reference guide, it'll, it'll help you a little bit more. You kind of have to know agency codes and um, contra uh, contracting office codes and things like that. Um, but static reports and standard reports, um, you can get the, the resources here. Okay, go back. And then um, we talked a little bit about um, FBO yesterday, finding the contract opportunities. Um, that's also out here. Um, if you happen to be in services, um, the wage determination is out here. So um, if you see a wage determination in any kind of um, solicitation, this is where the contracting officer comes and searches for the wage determination. They, it was with the Department of Labor, Labor and um, it's moved over here. Um, here's the SAM entity registration. It's, um, I think it's still at SAM.gov, but eventually it's going to um, all fall together. Um, I don't know what federal assistance is. If you want to go out and look at that, um, um, again, we don't <laughs> at PTAC we don't um, help with loans or assistance or anything like that. So if that's something of interest to you, um, there it is right there. Okay, let's get into running the reports. So when you um, see now, it's telling me I have to sign in again. Um, the first reports we're going to look at are 
the static reports. Oh, okay, it's let me in. So again, here are static reports. So that means um, all the search is all figured out and um, you can just get the report. So we can look at the um, COVID-19 report. So it's gonna tell us, um, and it comes up in an Excel. So for COVID-19, it's telling you um, which departments are um, awarding items that are considered COVID-19. Um, gives you total actions, and then um, most of the reports are gonna tell you small business, and then they're gonna go break it down into like disadvantaged business, um, the percent. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm clicking the wrong button, there we go. Um, and how much was awarded to like a small disadvantaged business. Um, so this is socioeconomic information um, that uh, it will be, you know, being reported to Congress about how many dollars are being spent um, on the coronavirus, the COVID. Um, so um, if you just happen to want to know that, you can come in and get the daily amounts. Um, and then this talks about um, the actual contracts. Um, so you can go out and explore that as well if you're wanting to, I believe it tells who it was awarded to. And again, this is all for your uh, market research. I do believe it gives who, yeah, here's the, the contractor right here. Um, so if you happen to be in that area, um, this one's Medford particularly, you could probably go in and um, search and get to California. Um, maybe you have some COVID things and you want a subcontractor, um, try to get in on a piece of that um, contract. You could contact the contractor for that. So, and if you're interested in any hurricanes, um, reports on those. Um, the other thing they just posted, but, um, the small business goaling, which tells if agencies met their um, goaling reports or their goaling for the year. Um, and actually it's usually a year um, behind. So 2018 is brand new. And bring that up. Oh, I forgot this one's really small, Let's see. Um, so these are, um, so the way to read this Department of Defense, um, they had uh, 35 million actions that were elig eligible for small business and it had uh, this dollar amount was eligible dollars. Um, they actually did uh, this many small business actions for this dollar amount, which led to a 23.856 percentage. Um, then it talked about small, how many actions went to small disadvantaged, how many dollars went to small disadvantaged, and um, it just keeps going um, for all, to cover all the categories. But sometimes it's better to open this in a Excel, but um, they didn't offer that. So you can keep going across till, say you're a veteran-owned small business, you can see they did um, 210 actions for veteran-owned businesses um, with this dollar amount. Um, and the goal is four points. Are they- um, Nancy, we can't see anything. Points? Whatever you're sharing. Sorry? We cannot see anything that oh, you're sharing. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I forgot I went off of the... Sorry about that, everybody. Um, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, I went back up to the top. Sorry about that, everyone. I, I forgot when I clicked out of the web, I had to um, share the report. Sorry about that. Um, so, the Department of Defense, um, as I was saying, um, the total small business eligible actions, um, this was how many actions were eligible. Um, this was how many dollars were eligible. And then we get into the actual actions. So of the 35 uh, million, 1 million 916 actions went to small business. Um, and that billion, <laughs> 71. 
uh, billion went to small business dollars. Um, and then it starts breaking it out into, and, and this is their percentage meeting their um, goal. Um, and then they talk about, um, sorry, that keeps popping up. Then it goes into breaking it down even further. So small disadvantaged, and as you scroll down, um, I like it better when they had it in Excel. Uh, easier to navigate. Um, so if we go back to the Department of Defense, here's small disadvantage, here's 8A dollars that they awarded. Here's veteran-owned small business actions, um, and they go through and break down all. Um, here's service disabled. So um, if you're in a particular category, say you're woman-owned and you want to know um, the actions that a particular um, funding department did for, um, for a fiscal year, again, this is 18. Um, this will help you also in your market research and targeting um, some agencies that maybe are a little more women-owned friendly. Um, and so that's that. Let's see, um, I have to bring it back to, there, okay. Um, I don't know, you probably didn't, did you get to see the COVID report? Did that come up when I, let's see. Let me go back and share that in case it didn't. Um, um, so this was the COVID one in case um, you didn't get to see it on my screen. Sorry about that. Um, again, this was the COVID report I was talking about. Um, how many actions each department has given um, where it's been coded as a COVID um, action. And again, like I said, this is so Congress can keep track of um, how many actions there have been. And then again, um, breaking it down to socioeconomic. So what small businesses are getting um, these particular um, actions or contracts for um, fighting the COVID. Um, COVID epidemic, pandemic. I want to make sure I, okay, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, good. Um, and then if you want the um, contract report, um, hold that one. Um, and this just gives you, I hope you're seeing that. Sure, okay, screen one, yes, you're seeing that, okay. Sorry, it moved around on me. <laughs> there we go. All right. Sorry about that. Technical glitches there. Okay, so here's the top 100 um, contractors. How many dollars have been obligated? Um, and then you can go through and actually look at each um, department. Department of Interior, Justice, Labor, Navy, um, Veterans Affairs, that's one we kind of like looking at. Um, so again, this will help you if um, you're just trying to get into government contracting and maybe you want to do some subcontracting because these are all probably large businesses. Um, so they also have a subcontracting goal um, that they have to do. So if you're a small company and trying to break into con uh, federal government contracting, it might be good to come in here and um, look these up and. Um, find out if they're meeting their small business goals and maybe you can um, get some contract action with them and learn a little bit more about federal contracting from them. Okay, let me close some of these down here. Get that to this one. Okay, getting better at switching. Okay, and then the standard report not tell me I got to sign in. <laughs> it kicks you out really fast.
Okay, so here's the standard reports. Um, I'm not going to go, I had one in particular because I knew I was going to um, start running out of time as we came in here. Um, but you can go in and explore these and like I said, get that reference document. Um, there's like 34 reports in here. The one I was going to show you um, had to do with goaling. A lot of these are tied to um, the small business goaling. Uh, so, but find the, you know, find one that interests you and, you know, just play it. You know, I learned by coming in and um, playing with each report and seeing what I can find. So um, I'm not going to go through each report. I just wanted to show you, like, the small business going um, on this one. So, you know, we saw the one from 2018. If we want to come in here and um, find one for this fiscal year. So we'll use 10-1-2019, the beginning of the fiscal year, to 03-31. 2020. Um, and then for this, I am doing, I decided we were going to look at the VA for this. So just ty start typing in veterans. And then you can find it right here, 3600 Department of Veterans Affairs. And then the office out of Sacramento is number 21. So we're going to check on NCO 21 and their rolling for uh, sometimes it takes a minute to come up. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to export this as an Excel so you can do that. Um, I won't change anything there. Do the export and we get our report. Um, we have to do a little So this is the report for NCO 21 for um, so far this year. Um, again, it goes back to um, their eligible actions so far for FY 2019, um, the eligible dollars, and then we get into the actuals. So the actuals are here, what they actually did. These are the actual dollars that went to small business, and then it starts breaking. We down. can't see anything again, Nancy. It went to a different screen. Oh. Sorry. Um, it's telling me you can see it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That's weird. Okay. Um, so again, let me go back. Sorry. <laughs> so the small business, again, here's the eligible actions. Here were the total eligible dollars. Here's the actual small business actions, the actual small business dollars. And then it starts breaking it out into, so we want to look at, um, because the VA is very um, veteran-centric. We'll take a quick look here at their veteran and their service disabled. A service disabled veteran is always the hardest one for any agency to, um, uh, to achieve. As we can see, they're doing really well here because it's usually um, 3% is their, is their typical goal. So, um, so just gives you an idea. Um, if you're into small business, you're a small business and you just want to check out what dollar amounts are going uh, where, and like I said, who's a um, small business friendly uh, agency, you can come and pull a report on them, um, see how they're doing this year, and maybe in your marketing uh, if you're a hub zone and you know they're not making their uh, their goaling percentage, um, you can get with their small business specialist like we talked about yesterday and just let them know. Um, I know you're not making your goal and this is what I can offer. Um, and then they can uh, get your information to a contracting officer and hopefully get you some business. So those were the two reports. Just make sure you're seeing. Okay, you are good. Okay. Um, so that was the uh, that was the standard reports. Uh, uh, just one of the many that you can um, go in and find. 
Um, like I said, most of these reports, I find they break them out by um, small business. Um, so just go in and play with them, and like I said, get that um, that reference guide that you can find in uh, training. I'm sorry, wrong place. <laughs> About contract data reports. Um, you can go in and find these reference guides, and um, I believe they do give you a walkthrough of show you that. I know we have to get going for questions here real soon. Um, it'll walk you through uh, creating a, a reports ad hoc. This one's about standard reports, so it gives you a, uh, gives you a walkthrough of, of how to do the report. So they're really good guides. So um, download that and go in and play with standard reports, and hopefully you can uh, find what report you're looking for. Um, I don't have time to describe them all today. I wish I did, but I don't. And I think we're going back to I think no, I don't want to share. Okay, I think I have it right. <laughs> and um We'll go to the question slide and okay, I'm getting into the chat window. All right, but I'm here to help out as well. Yeah. Did I miss the slide for our upcoming webinar? I'm not um, in here. I didn't see, maybe it's not on there. Um, you can check out our upcoming webinars on our webpage at norcalptac.org <laughs> slash calendar. All of it's there. Okay, let me look at the questions really quick here. Um, I hope everybody, I just now see there was audio. Sorry, I don't check the chats while I'm instructing, but I'm sure uh, James would have let me know if there was something. Um, does the effective date mean the same as awarded date? The effective date means the date that the contract actually starts. It may be different than the awarded date. How do you look for upcoming contracts or does it only show history of awarded contracts? Right, this is a data reporting um, system, so it only shows awarded contracts. We kind of went through upcoming contracts yesterday and that market research. Today was just about FPDS. Is the example of awarding Blackbird Industries an exception to the rule of no contracts awarded within the last 90 days would be displayed? Um, the last 90 days was just DOD contracts, Department of Defense. Uh, we looked at Veterans Affairs. Blackbird was with Veterans Affairs. Contract modification different from ch contract change order. Well, a change order is a modification. Um, it's a type of modification. So it is different because I hope that explained it. <laughs> when we say modification, it could be a change order, it could be an administrative order, um, or it could be oh, make me forget now. Um, what site has most accurate and updated awarded information between FPDS data? .sam.gov and usaspending.gov. Um, I always prefer FPDS I'm, um, for the accurate and updated awarded information because it comes directly from the, uh, the 350 that the contracting officer has to submit um, before the contract can be awarded. So FPDS is always going to have the most accurate and updated award information. Um, Beta.sam.gov is just all they have is the reports in there. Um, so, and that um, beta.sam.gov is, I mean, there's many things in there. If you're talking about the reports that come from FPDS, um, that's going to be the updated information. USAspending.gov um, pulls from pulls from FPDS. Um, and I probably prefer FPDS because that's what I use as a contracting officer, so I kind of know how to navigate it and I know um, what the reports mean. Um, so I would always default to FPDS. 
Um, yes, you're going to receive the recording and the slides, although the slides don't have that much information. At least you'll have the recording um, to show how I went through. Well, today's webinar only about reports. How about searching for opportunities? Was that session done yesterday? Yes, that was done yesterday. And James? And yes, up? the um, the recording and the slides for yesterday's webinar are posted on our website. Um, if you click on the resources tab on, on our home page, and then you select uh, past webinars, you can get a, a list of all of our past webinars, uh, including the one from yesterday and going back a number of years, I believe. So every, every webinar we hold, we, we record and supply the, the, the PDF version of the slides. Are you seeing my screen, James? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so um, if you go to our NorCal PTAC site under resources, um, we have past webinars and the one from yesterday right there. And then uh, part two will be there within the next day or two or today, depending. Um, and then our calendar of events, that was, uh, we were missing that slide for some reason. I, I didn't get that in there. But uh, here's all the upcoming events. Um, James, did you want to talk a little bit more about it? I know you're sure. <laughs> some are ours, yeah. Some of them belong to other. <laughs> right. Yeah. We 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 put events on that we you know uh, some of our partners or friends in the industry have notified us of, but um, these specifically. Let's see. Can I control your screen? Um, yeah. yeah we mm -hmm. the the for April 16th the webinar um, is on uh, just general federal government procurement updates for 2020. Um, so there's a lot, a lot that's been changing and we do these update webinars every once in a while. So that's a very good one to log on to. Um, let's see, uh, on the April 22nd, there is an understanding 2020 cybersecurity re regulations webinar. That one is, uh, there's been a whole lot of changes in the world of cybersecurity compliance, the federal government. Um, so there's a whole lot of overhaul there. So there's plenty of updates to receive there. <clears throat> and let's see, I think we have one in uh, on May 7th. We've got a set yourself up for federal marketplace success webinar and uh, gain access to federal contracts with HubZone. HubZone is historically underutilized business zone, um, which your business may or may not fall under. And uh, this webinar will be on how to uh, apply for uh, HubZone status and to use it to get contracts. Um, and our NorCal Procurement Expo is not actually going to be on uh, May 29th due to the COVID outbreak. Um, but yes, um, go to our website. Again, it's norcalptech.org up here slash calendar and you can find updated information on all of our upcoming events. <laughs> yeah. And does that bring us to a close here, Nancy? Um, I believe so. Um, that's All right. I don't see any more questions coming in. So great. Um, yeah. So All right. um, I just want to say, uh, NorCal Tech, um, we can help you one-on-one -on -one with any of this information. So um, if you're if you're struggling to find the information you need for uh, market research. Um, Go ahead and go in and, and sign up with us and uh, someone like myself or um, another one of our um, procurement specialists can help you out. Here's our apply now. Um, again, this is for Northern California PTAC. If you're outside of our area, um, you can look for the PTAC within your area. We're, we're all very happy to help and, and get you going. Okay, James. Absolutely. All right. Um, so thank you, Nancy, so much for, for that great presentation, and thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, we're cutting things off, but I want to let you know you should have just received an email from us a couple minutes ago. This email will have a link to a survey um, from SurveyMonkey that we'd really like if you would fill out because it helps us know how we did on the webinar, and it makes uh, our funder happy as well. So if we can get feedback on the events we put on, we'll be a, a overall better program, and we'll be able to continue offering our services. As I promised, uh, there will be a recording of and today's slides posted as well on that website we showed you there, on that webpage. 
And this email that I'm sending will give you a link where you'll be able to find these resources um, in case you spaced out for that part. Um, I'll probably do that by this afternoon. Once again, I'd also like to thank the SBA and the Northern California SBDC for partnering with us for this event. And um, we hope to see you all on future webinars. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Right,